You definitely don't love your life if you ever dare to speak against Zelensky while being on Ukrainian soil. Ukraine is now infamous for government-backed and government-maintained illegal hit lists. The country has an official militia known as Mitrovorets, which works under Ukraine's security service and produces a list of people and organizations deemed to be enemies of Ukraine. And now, it seems that the notorious militia has earmarked Amnesty Ukraine officials as its next target. <sighs> Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host, Atul Mishra, and if you haven't subscribed to the TFI Global channel yet, Hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. If you don't do that, I'll continue reading at the same pace. Now back to my normal pace. Amnesty International recently published a report that accused Kiev's forces of endangering civilians by basing themselves in residential buildings, schools and hospitals. Amnesty listed incidents in which Ukrainian forces appear to have exposed civilians to danger in 19 towns and villages in the Kharkiv, Donbas and Mykolaiv regions. This was startling for Zelensky and his precarious regime, which has so far presented itself in pious and even saintly light. Now, the head of Amnesty International's Ukraine office Oksana Pokalachuk has resigned. The fearful amnesty official told that amnesty was spreading Russian propaganda, despite amnesty claiming that the report was verified by its visiting experts and officials on ground zero. Naturally, Oksana is now scared for her life and doesn't want herself to be associated with the report to avoid backlash and stringent actions from the Zelensky regime. The same is the case with other amnesty officials who are now distancing themselves from the damning report one after another. They realize that if an association between them and the amnesty report is found, it can land them in boiling water in no time. It is no secret that Ukrainian President Zelensky is running a fascist state. Organizations like Mitrovorets demotivate the local populace from bringing out the truth to the world. Ukrainian civilians fear that they would end up getting featured on the list and would be targeted by the Zelensky regime. Anyway, Ukrainians are not alien to state-orchestrated killings and assassinations under Zelensky's rule. For instance, Ukrainian journalist Sonia Lukashova ended up getting featured on the notorious Mitrovorets website when she established that Russian military rape allegations produced by the country's former human rights chief, Lidomila Denisova, were false. You see, Amnesty International could not publish such a report without consulting the local Ukrainian headquarters and its officials. We must give it to the brave officials in Ukraine who risk their lives just to bring out the truth to the surface. Amnesty International Secretary General Agnes Kalamad responded to her resignation saying, Oksana has been a valued member of Amnesty staff and has led the Amnesty International Ukraine office for seven years with many significant human rights successes. This reaffirms that Oksana must have been an integral part of the investigation into Zelensky's war crimes. However, since Zelensky's regime is now breathing fire down Oksana's neck, she is hesitant to admit her contribution. Oksana and many others like her are afraid of the consequences of their brave actions. They are petrified of the consequences that would strike them. Zelensky and other high-ranking Ukrainian officials consider the report to be a tool of Moscow's propaganda. But there is no way that an organization like Amnesty could be swayed by Putin. Moreover, Amnesty traces its origins to the United Kingdom, a nation that has vehemently opposed the Kremlin's war since the beginning. Therefore, Zelensky's claims don't hold ground. And if any human rights official of Amnesty International is harmed in the coming days, Zelensky and only Zelensky should be held responsible and accountable.